This is the story of a man who, even as a teenager, had a vision of crossing the seas in a reed boat, a vision that no one thought possible. Driven by curiosity and the question of the origin of our civilizations, Dominique Görlitz embarks on his voyages of exploration. He has already sailed several expeditions on the Mediterranean and even the North Atlantic. This film accompanies Dominique Görlitz on his fourth adventurous expedition, which has taken him halfway around the world, from Egypt to the Black Sea. Across the seven seas My skin feels the ocean breeze I'm guided by a dream A dream made of history Following in the footsteps of the Argonauts, the crew of the Abora 4 will explore the distant trading ventures of the peoples of the Black Sea region and the Aegean. Experts still disagree as to whether Herodotus' claim that Egyptian seafarers found their way to the distant Black Sea in order to import valuable raw materials from there is true or not. The Abora 4 mission is the continuation of the Cheops project from 2013, which dealt with the use of iron in ancient Egypt. So, was there overseas trade and lively exchange at the dawn of antiquity? And is it really conceivable that the pyramid builders in Egypt used a metal such as iron, which all experts previously believed was smelted for the first time by the Hittites a thousand years later. Excitement was high when they heard, we are sailing through the caldera of Santorini. It was clear to everyone on board that this was not only going to be a beautiful voyage, but a challenging one too. This is a Bora 4, German reboat expedition. A very good day to you. Thank you for the warm welcome. This is the frigate Hessen on her way back from the Aegean Sea, and we look forward to seeing you at sea. Yes, this is the German expedition ship Abora 4 heading for Patara in Turkey. We started in Bulgaria, sailed through the Bosporus, through the Sea of Marmara, and then through the Dardanelles, we went through the Aegean Sea, and now we are starting from Santorini, heading for Rhodes. Yes, this is the frigate Hessen. Wonderful. We are all visibly amazed and delighted by the encounter and the event. For the time being, we wish you all the best. Arrive safely. Always fair winds on the following seas. The new destination, Patara, is a very special place on the southwest coast of Turkey. It was the capital of the Lycian League and had the most important harbour in this area. In ancient times, ships that sailed here from Greece or Syria regularly stopped in Patara. The same was true for Egyptian merchant ships, which had passed through here since ancient times. Near Patara, archaeologists found large quantities of obsidian, a black volcanic glass rock that was transported here over 500 kilometers from the Greek island of Melos, probably by reed boat, an incredible 11,000 years ago. This fact was considered archaeological dogma for a long time. Have a dogmas in archaeology and the Abora's sea voyage. What did Abora's sea voyage mean for you? It has actually given me a lot to think about. In fact, now I can finally understand how the obsidian about 30 kilometers north of Patara was excavated. How did it get here? That would only have been possible with sea travel. 
And Abora 4, this expedition, actually confirms that these early trade routes have been used again and again for thousands of years. And according to our current knowledge, these prehistoric trade routes have actually hardly ever changed. Given Patara's history, there could be no better place in the Mediterranean for the Abora 4 to end her expedition. After more than 1,500 kilometers under sail, the expedition leader now summarizes the outcome of this demanding sea voyage. The voyage of the Abora 4 has more than fulfilled our expectations. Our search for the Faroe's iron has showed that the presumed trade route from the Black Sea across the two straits and the windy Aegean Sea could be navigated with an ancient Egyptian reed boat. On the other hand, close contact with Turkish archaeologists has revealed that there is clear evidence of the use of iron in ancient Egyptian times, both in Troy and in Anatolia. According to Herodotus and Aeschylus, we have to assume the beginning of iron smelting in these regions. But also, the way that early tin bronzes were transported has been confirmed by our journey across the Sea of Marmara and the Aegean Sea to Limnos. By no means did ancient seafarers always paddle from mooring to mooring in the supposedly safe protection of the coast. The Abora 4 finally overturned this archaeological paradigm and has demonstrated that seafaring was the world wide web of antiquity.